Hi everyone, I'm FM Greeno and welcome along to day 14 of Help Will Come Tomorrow. This is a survival game set in Siberia during the Russian Revolution. The four people you see sat around the fireplace here have escaped from a train that's been attacked by some local renegades. They're hiding out in the forest and trying to survive as best they can until help arrives. We've got a lot to do today, so let's get straight into it. So you can see our camp is starting to come together pretty well. The shelter's looking decent. We've got good cover here in the Palisade area. Uh, the quarantine point needs a bit of work, but nobody's sick or injured at the moment, so it's not really a high priority for me. And most importantly, I think at the moment, the workshop is coming along really well. So we can now start to make weapons, we can start to make clothes, we can do all sorts of bits and bobs around here, which is going to be really helpful for everything else around the camp. So, one thing I've been talking about for a number of days now is getting some blankets made. And I think we're finally just about in a position to be able to do this. So, for blankets we need two string, which we have, some material, um, so we can use this canvas, and we can use the remaining rags here. Now, in terms of making stuff, I think Maria and Dimitri are probably the two best candidates. So we'll get them to come up here and try and work together. Now, as you can see here, they're both enjoying working with each other at the moment, which is good. So we'll upgrade this. They both used an action point. But by the time they come out of here, we should find that we have a lovely blanket for people to kip under. So that's going to protect them against the cold a bit better. And apparently it also increases morale ever so slightly. Now one exciting thing that we have done over the last couple of days with this improved workshop area is we've got a game flaying table now. Which means we, the animals that we found, we haven't been able to hunt any yet, we're not competent enough for that, but we have found a couple of dead ones kicking about. Um, Maria came up yesterday and made a lovely bowl of goulash. So we have four bowls of that. And we're going to give that out to everyone for breakfast this morning. And I imagine everyone will be relatively chuffed with that. There we go. They didn't think it looked very good. But all of their hunger is completely gone away. Now first hasn't. So we are going to have to deal with that. So I think again we're going to get one of these two guys to come down. And filter some water for us. So who's going to come and do that? I think we'll get Maria to come and do this today. That's increased her fatigue a little bit. She's used an action point, but we have six lots of water. So that takes us up to eight. And what that means is we can distribute some to everybody. And that cures almost everything. We've got a bit of fatigue here. Sergei is exhausted. Maria is tired. But obviously they can have a nice little rest later on. So, having done this first little task here, I'm wondering what the next best thing for us to do might be. Obviously, we'd like to send an expedition out if we can. Um, but if we come over here to the workshop, there are certain things that we're able to do that we weren't able to do previously. And one of them is breaking up materials. So, what we can do is we can get um, branches, for example, and chop them up to make sticks, which is fairly useful. Because if we look around, for example, up here, where the snares that we need, if we look here, we need eight sticks and we've only got three. But if we could break up some branches to make sticks, that would be helpful. We need string, of course, and we need structure. We don't have any string because we just used it. But possibly, we can also, let's just check if this is an, an, an option, fabric alteration. So if we were to... We could use the canvas we've got to make string. So that's an option. So let's try some of this because the string, we always struggle with string. Um, and it's always the only place you can find it is down by the train where the renegades are hanging out and it's very, very dangerous and difficult to get to. So let's try some of this. So if we bring, um, who are we going to bring up here? Sergei. Let's, let's give you a go here. So you can take this. And create some string. A little bit more tired. Used his action point up. But he's got seven string there doing that. Now that's pretty cool. Oh, well, we're happy with that. 
Good job, young man. So, now if you remember right from early in the game, Sergei is also the one who's good at making and setting and checking snares. So, if we get someone, maybe he can also do this job. He's still got two action points. We do need to um, also break down the branches into sticks. So, if we do this, I mean, we could do it with every, every branch we've got. Let's do that. So come on, Sergey, you can come and do that again. There we go. A little bit more fatigue for him, but now we've got 18 sticks from breaking that down. That's pretty cool. Okay. So he now has one action point left. Let's use that by coming up here and he can build a snare. So we've got loads of sticks. We've got plenty of string. A little bit of structure required. Well, we can use a stone. And we will bring young Sergei up here. Oh, now, do we need two people to do this, do we? Okay. But let's bring... Um, let's bring Sir Edward Gray up here. He doesn't really want to work with him, but that's okay. And we will make some snares. So as you can see here, one little snare is made. And we'll be able to come and check that regularly to see if anything has been caught in there. We've still got five string left will probably come in helpful for something else around the camp making tools etc i think what we might do now is send another expedition out we've got, we've got a fair amount of food mind so we're okay for that we're doing pretty well here maybe maybe we'll make some more tools then because i don't really think we need to go out of the camp today but let's see if we can make any more tools over here because then that would be a, a lot more helpful um, later on when we're going out and trying to, to catch things and whatever. Weapons is something that we really wanted to think about making. So could we make a bow? So we've got enough sticks and we've got enough string. So that's a possibility, isn't it? Let's make a bow. That would be a cool thing for us to take out on our next mission. And then presumably we need to make some arrows as well. So we have enough sticks, we have enough feathers. We need some sharp stuff, or we've got plenty of stuff here. Cut stone would do it. Now, should we get him to do this again? I'll tell you what, we'll get Sir Edward Grey to come and do this. Cool, so he's now made four arrows. Awesome. So we can go hunting with them. So if we were to look, I mean, we haven't really got enough action points to be going out and about too much. We can have a little look and see if there's any animals around. There are, but it's in a risky place. That's a shame. I would have liked to have gone out and test that today, if possible. Yeah, I don't think it's really worth us going out and doing that. So probably what we'll do now is just hang around in the camp use up the action points that we've got left um maria could actually upgrade something couldn't she she's very very good at repairing things so the palisades at 78 percent the shelter's at 85 the quarantine's not in great shape the campfire isn't in great shape probably that's the best one for us to try and repair a little bit isn't it so if we repair that what do we need so we need a stick we can do that and we need some structure, a couple of bits of clay. Now, Maria doesn't always use an action point up when she's doing this. So let's see. Now, today, we're not so lucky. She has actually used the action point up. But that's okay. But now the campfire quality is much higher. Look at that, 84%. So that's probably going to uh, improve things around the camp a little bit. And we've got two action points left. So what we probably could do, again, just filter some water and then maybe make some dinner. We've still got some meat left, so we could probably make another nice bowl of, uh, of meat stew of some kind or another. So who do we think is going to be the most likely candidate to, uh, to make a nice stew? Maybe, maybe Dimitri. I, you know, I think Dimitri is a bit more useful around the camp. So maybe we'll get Sir Edward Grey to come up here and filter some water. There we go, another six units of water there. So that should enable us to cook something now and have water for the morning. So we take uh, 
takes Sir Edward out of there. We come back down to the campfire and bring Dimitri down. And what do you think he can cook? We've not had him cook anything before. A delicious stew. How many, how many of these do you get, though? Because with the normal stew, you're using four water up and some meat. Delicious stew, you're only using two water. I don't know how many bowls of stew that's going to give you. But let's have a look. I mean, we've got plenty of herbs and stuff kicking around. Some nice garlic in there. A piece of meat. I've got a feeling we're not going to get enough stew out of this, but we'll give it a go. Let's see. So he's done that. And we have got, ah, just two bowls of stew. Okay. Well, he hasn't got enough action points to do any more, but maybe we can get Maria to make one in the morning and everyone can have a nice bowl of that. We've got enough meat, we've got enough uh, garlic kicking around, so that's potentially an option. So all we've got really left to do now is to send a couple of the guys up to rest. Well, the only two in need of it, Sergei and Maria, so they can come up here and do this. Give them a little nap. Uh, camp visibility is pretty low, so we can probably afford to put a bit more on the fire. What have we got here that we can use for that? We haven't run out of mould, have we? Surely not. No, there it is. It's in our food section. Of course it is. Nothing more delicious than mould. So look at this. We can actually get... There we go. We'll stick it up to there. So that takes our visibility to 25%, which I think is fine. But we've got a, a slightly better fire for the guys overnight. So that should work nicely. Okay, so these two are having a nice kip. These two are just chilling by the fire. I think that's time for us to end our day. Not very eventful, but we've taken care of quite a bit around the camp. And see what they want to talk about in the evening. Or we have an event triggered here. The night is coming, and as usual, you make sure your supplies are well secured. You have enough brushwood to stay warm until the morning. Meanwhile, Sergei is sitting under the tree. He's back to you. Maybe this dodger is secretly eating something. Ivanov, if I see that you took an extra portion, Sergei turns around, hiding something in his bosom pocket. Relax, I don't steal anything. I'm coming. Yes, and what are you hiding there? The boy suddenly stops hesitating. Oh, nothing like that. Come on, we'll arrange the brushwood before it gets dark. Sergei Ivanov, we promise to share all the riches of the tiger and not to keep anything to ourselves. Okay, let it be. Clearly confused, Sergei pulls a written over card from under his shirt. I'm writing a letter. It goes slowly since I'm no poet. And I don't have much time. Anyway, the days are short and after work I rarely have enough light to finish. A letter. And can I ask what the name of the beloved one is? Natalia, but why do you say beloved? Have you read over my shoulder? Ha ha, no boy. It was this blush that betrayed you. Ah, oh, so Sergei is secretly writing a letter to a girl. Interesting. So now it's time for our customary nighttime chat around the fireplace. Five options to choose from. We'll have two conversations as always. Now, camp morale is really high, so I think we can afford to take a chance with something that's a little bit more. I'm not upsetting as such, but Maria's grief, we've seen this pop up a couple of times. So let's see what she has to say about this. I thought of Pietrusha, and me, and Nadia the cook, and all the service. None of us wanted to take this route. Why is the world arranged in such a way that for the convenience of some rich people, we all have to work and risk our lives? No, oh, nothing changes, Maria. It's still the way it is now. I don't want to sound rude, but nobody forced you to work. You were on the train of your own free will. And what happened along the way was not the fault of the passengers, regardless of their position. My own free will? What choice did we have when my father died, my mother got sick, and my uncle Theodore was taken to the army? We had to go to work, and we are from a fair family and do not touch what doesn't belong to you. But nobody rewarded us for these virtues. Are oh, you feeling a bit sorry for yourself, Maria? But did anyone cheat on you? Were you beaten or humiliated at work? 
child, don't complain, because you are more fortunate than most of the passengers and the rest of the service. Okay, so he's a conservative. Keeping to old established rules is crucial for this character. It's a bit late in the day for us to be finding out things like this, but it's not a surprise, I suppose. Okay, what else has he got to say? And if it hadn't been for those damned riots, the Imperial Gendarmerie would have dealt with deserters and thieves. Nobody would have suffered if people had listened to His Majesty Nicholas. But if the noble Tsar had listened to the prayers of the people, he would have signed the peace long ago, and Uncle Theodore would have returned from the army. Child, you may deserve compassion. But please don't teach us things you don't know about. Okay, so what are we going to say here? Are we going to keep the peace? I'm not looking for a quarrel with you. Or try to put yourself in someone else's shoes sometimes. Uh, let's, let's see if Maria's going to fight her corner a little bit. Those know nothing who haven't experienced anything in life except for comfort and worship. Try walking in someone else's shoes sometimes understand how uncomfortable they can be but even though we don't understand each other there is no aristocracy or plebs here and now we all need to help each other oh so she's trying to cross the class divide bless her well done okay so what else have we got here now <clears throat> good manners marauders rationality not to step back or ye wretched of the earth well, I've seen marauders pop up quite a bit, so let's have a go at this. Do you know who these killers are? It's obvious. These soldiers loyal to the Tsar. Who else would shoot civilians? Well, he's not fond of that. Nonsense. They look more like subversives, such as those during the July crisis. Oh, Sergei's going to chip in now. If I may interfere. In fact, the attackers didn't preach any slogans, nor did they look like soldiers. I'm telling you, this is a repeat of Bloody Sunday and Znamiensky Square. These soldiers are probably trying to stifle the revolution and sabotage the railway. Does the name of General Ivanov mean anything to you? But you, are pro you probably are completely unaware of the recent events. The soldiers loyal to the Tsar defend the order. And Nikolai Yudovich Ivanov was long arrested by the damned provisional government. Just like General Kornilov now, you can only destroy the old order under the guise of a good change. He really doesn't like the idea of this revolution, does he? Look, they can just they can be just plain cutthroats. Yes, they were well armed and organized. But they are no soldiers. Don't look for the devil where he is not. Well, unless they are the investigators paid by the Bosch. What is he on about now? Well, <laughs> very odd conversation around the fire this evening. Maria kind of stuck up for herself a bit. Uh, I think she got a bit of respect from Dimitri for doing so. Hopefully morale is good enough and everyone's going to end up with their full action points for tomorrow. I think we might uh, maybe make a couple more tools and go out uh, out and about again. But yeah, here we go. Everyone's got their action points. Three for everybody. Excellent stuff. So let's see whether any actions are triggered here in the morning. No, no snow anywhere or over the camp. We have a clear sky, so we'll have to be mindful of camp visibility today. But there's nothing that we have to take care of that um yeah that's happened overnight no bear attacks in the camp or snow or workshops falling into a ravine or anything so that's good well i hope you enjoyed day 14 of help will come tomorrow um it wasn't the most exciting day i guess but we achieved quite a bit around the camp and uh, yeah that's going to really help us going forwards if you did enjoy it drop a like on there for me please uh, helps me get seen by more people of course and if you've got any comments about this episode or the series as a whole or any tips you think for what i should be doing next please let me know in the comment section below and of course 
you know what to do if you're not subscribed to the channel yet that's right hit the subscribe button come and hop on the greeno bus there is plenty of room for you all but it just remains for me to thank you for watching and i will see you soon for day 15 of help will come tomorrow bye for now